how do you look at the property sector? Would you be buying physical property now or would you be buying uh, stocks instead? Yeah, I think in the near term, you know, property price and stock will have kind of like a tumble because of the weak demand. And if you look at the GDP growth for Hong Kong is 0.3% this year expected and 3.9% next year. So what we need is a real economic rebound, in particular if the China border is opening up, there are more economic activities. But in the in the near term, you know, I think we have to wait and see until those talent programs, people move back to Hong Kong and then buy the, you know, property. So at current stage, I think it's too early to buy both property stocks and, you know, physical property, you know, at this moment. William, would that be based on an assumption that the horse has already bolted when it does come to the people leaving Hong Kong and that they're not necessarily likely to return? Well, I think, you know, there is a trend, if you like, in the last two and a half years is because of the border or the COVID, you know, situation in China. My expectation is it's not going to be forever and it's going to be opening up and there will be more economic activities. Uh, we are relatively more positive in the mid to long term, you know, on the Hong Kong property market. One particular catalyst or policy we are waiting for is the Greater Bay Area catalyst. If the border is opening up in you know Q1 next year, if the Greater Bay Area incentive is coming back, then we expect the property demand will be coming back up. So I believe a good timing for buying both could be you know at the end of this year when there are more announcements on those you know policies. But it, but it's not just the, the zero COVID policy that has led to some of the brain drain. It's also that there are some of the what you could classify as restrictive policies in other aspects like the, the national security law. So do you think that Hong Kong can remain that financial hub? Obviously, you have to be invested there or, or you have to have a presence there in order to have that flow coming through into China. But do you think that's all it's going to be from now on, only if you have that direct exposure to China that you're going to be doing business in Hong Kong? Well, I think, you know, we have have passed the bottom part, if you like, you know, I believe the key, you know, indicator is if you look at the IPO market in Hong Kong, despite the like looser kind of like global risk of, you know, sentiment, but if you look at the potential IPO pipeline, you know, in Hong Kong compared to Singapore and rest of the region, I think Chinese companies still prefer to list in the Hong Kong market. So as such, I think the financial demand or financial importancy of the sector in Hong Kong will remain. And part of the talents, you know, will come back. So from my perspective, we have passed the bottom part. But more importantly, uh, is the COVID policy that impact people, you know, not moving back to Hong Kong rather than the other factors that will you mentioned earlier.